All right, so in this video, or should I say in the previous video, we did all of the configuration prior to firing up the virtual machines and initiating those new virtual hard drives that we created. If I wanted to confirm that, I can go right here in Server Manager out to uh, File and Storage, go to Disks, and I can see that there is my new disk drive ready to go. So I'll come back here to Local Server and the thing we need to do next is actually install the role of Active Directory. That's a pretty simple operation. We come up here to Manage and Add Roles. Before we begin, we'll read that and choose Next. Go ahead and pause if you want a detailed view of these screens. We are doing role-based or feature-based installation, so I'm going to choose Next. At this point, I want to make sure that this is listing the server and that it's listing the correct IP address. Notice if I mouse over, great feature. I can get the information that I need here. At this point, I'll go ahead and choose Next. I'm going to choose Active Directory Domain Services. And as you can see, it's going to install some additional roles and features with Active Directory. I'm going to just choose the default choose next again more information on things that wants to install i'm going to choose the defaults choose next next i'm going to click here to restart the destination server and choose yes when i get that pop-up reminding me at this point i'm going to choose install now i'm going to go ahead and pause this video while i get the other server domain controller 2 to have this role installed. As you can see here in Domain Controller 0002, it is completing the installation of the Active Directory role. Now once that's done, we actually have to configure Active Directory and we're going to start on the first server. So I'm going to click over and activate my first virtual machine and close this window. If you notice, I have this notification up here that I'm going to click on and it tells me that the installation is complete, so I can close that. Now what I need to do is actually configure or do the post-deployment configuration for Active Directory. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Promote This Server to a Domain Controller. Now, this is a brand new domain, a brand new forest, so I'm going to choose Add a New Forest. I'm going to actually build a subdomain on my root domain or on my second level domain for Active Directory. So I'm going to call that corp.miim.com. What you would want to use is whatever your domain name is and then corp in front of it. So I'll choose next. Now this might take just a few minutes as it goes through to the next level. So I'll pause. Oh, there we go. No need to pause. At this point, you can see that it's going to want to install DNS server because it's not finding and there is no configured pre-DNS for my environment. And of course, Active Directory is based in DNS. It's also going to make this a global catalog server. Now, what I need to do is type down here, directory services restore mode. Now, my suggestion for a password for this is it not be a default administrative password. What I would do is create a unique password, I can't type while I'm talking, that can be locked up and secured in case we ever need to use DSRM to restore Active Directory. At this point, I'll choose Next. It will give me that notification of the um, delegation of DNS. I don't need to worry about anything. I'll choose Next. At this point, it's going to go ahead and give me a suggested NetBIOS domain name. Now, NetBIOS, you might remember, is for older versions of servers. So I'm probably not going to put any applications and servers on my brand new server 2012 R2 Active Directory environment that is going to need this. But I'm going to leave it as Corp. I'll choose Next. Now, simply be patient here as this next window comes up. If you remember, we created a drive, an S drive for Sysvol, that it is suggested that all of these files go on. So I'm going to change this to redirect all of these. It's going to go ahead and create that Windows directory with an NTDS 
for the database folder, log files, and then sysvol, so the system volume. That's why I called that drive sysvol. I'll choose next. It's going to give me configuration. Now, folks, definitely go through. Make sure you spelled everything exactly as you expect it to be because once you install Active Directory, the only way to change these settings is to uninstall and reinstall as most of these are key to the performance of Active Directory. So I'll choose next. After going through, making sure everything's correct, there's my S. It'll have me view the results. Now, even in a fast virtual environment, this may take a few minutes. So I'll pause and be patient. As you can see, I've got a few warnings here. I can review the warnings if I'd like. Everything checks out completed. All prerequisite checks I've passed successfully, so I may install Active Directory. So it's going to go ahead and do the final configuration and make this machine my first Active Directory domain controller in the domain. Now, don't get ahead here. We want to let this machine complete. It will do a reboot. We'll re-log in, make sure everything looks good, and then we will go install the second domain controller. The reason for this is there's a few things that are different here that we need to do on this server so that it's in the same Active Directory. So let me pause while that completes. So as you can see, the server was installed correctly. It's restarting, shutting down, and restarting my new Active Directory domain controller for my corp.miim.com domain. Now keep in mind that it's doing other configurations as it's restarting. So again, just simply be patient. Now you'll notice now that this is an Active Directory domain controller, I'm not logging in with the local account. I'm logging in with a domain administrator account that has the same password. So I'll go ahead and do that. It'll start up my machine, open up server manager, and as we'll see down below here in just a second, Active Directory will become a role on this server. So there we go. There's Active Directory Domain Services. Now, once we know that this is installed, we can come up here to Tools. We can see that we have the Active Directory modules installed. I can open up Users and Computers if I want and just make sure it's installed. Now, let's go over to the second server. We'll close this. And again, we get this notification. I'm going to click on that notification, exiting out of the fact that the feature has been installed and coming in to promote this server to a domain controller. Now, here is the key. I am going to add a domain controller to the existing domain when this becomes active. So I'll just be patient till that is active, which it is. If you notice here, I'm looking for a domain. And if I put in the domain um, credentials, let me show you. In this case, I have to say corp for the subdomain dash administrator. And then my credentials. And I say, OK, if you notice it switched to the corporate domain, it finds the corp. There it is. I'll say OK. It has, because I've already logged in, the credentials it needs, and I choose Next. So the key here is adding that domain controller. Now, if you notice, it's going to add DNS. It's going to add a global catalog. And I, again, need to put in a directory services restore mode password for this server as well. Now, I'm perfectly fine with using that same password that I used on the previous server. So I'll put that in. If you notice, it goes to the default first site, what I want. This is not going to be a read-only domain controller. This is going to be my secondary redundant domain controller in case my first domain controller goes down. I'll choose next at the delegation of DNS. And it says to replicate. I'm going to allow it to replicate from any domain controller. So it's going to go out and find the nearest domain controller that it can replicate with. Well, in our case, we know it's only this domain controller here. So I'll choose Next. Here again, we created that drive on this server, which is also the S drive or the sysvol drive. 
So I'll come in here, making sure to change all that information. Choose next. I'm gonna go through the configuration, make sure everything looks correct. It is going to go to the corp.miim.com, default first site. It's gonna add a global catalog, DNS server. DNS delegation will be no. Here's my files, everything looks good. I will choose next. Now again, this may take a few minutes, so simply be patient. Again, it's met all of the prerequisites and I choose install. It'll go through the install process, so I'll pause. Well, as you can see, my server has installed. I'm gonna come in here, notice I'm in the corp domain. That's always a good sign. I'm gonna put in my password. It went ahead and restarted itself after configuring, as it should. As you can see, the server's booted up. There's Active Directory Domain Services and DNS. I can come in and check the tools. I'm gonna to go in Active Directory Users and Computers. You can see I expanded that on the first server. So I'm gonna open that on the second server, expand it, and just double click on my domain controller's container. That's a container to see that both domain controllers are listed. So in our next video, we'll go ahead and start creating some basic users. Take care.